Hey everyone, this is Kevin from thechesswebsite.com, and today we're going to be going over the Italian Gambit, which derives from the Italian game, which is e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, and then bishop to c5. And the Italian Gambit is d4, attacking the center of the board, attacking this bishop right here. And we're going to be going over the accepted lines, really, because if black doesn't accept this, meaning they take this pawn with either their pawn, their bishop, or their knight. They're just in a world of hurt. They're allowing white to overwhelm the center of the board. They're generally going to be moving their bishop back somewhere. Uh, it's just really, really bad for black if they don't attack. But most players don't even know what the best way to take here is. And then depending on where they go, they could be in a lot of trouble. So we're going to be going over each of the lines if they take this material here on d4. The first variation we're going to look at is if the knight takes on d4, and we're going to capture here on e5. And you can already tell we have a very strong attack. Both the knight and the bishop both attacking this square here on f7, which for black early on is the weakest square on the board because the only piece that is defending it is the king, which king not really the piece you want to be defending your material early on. Uh, you want to be hiding behind your material with your king. So definitely going to be taking here on e5. Another reason I like this is there's only really one good move for black, and that is queen to e7. It's still not that great for black. White has a lot of strong options, but if he goes anywhere else, it's an extremely good game for white. And I like to put my opponents in a situation where they can make a lot of mistakes. But if they do decide to go ahead and play uh, queen here to e7, we're still going to take with our knight here on f7. They're, they're not going to capture with their queen here because we would just recapture that. More than likely, they're going to take this pawn right here. If they don't, that's kind of weird. It is the best move. Take material, put your opponent in check. They have to do something. You're going to play king to f1. Yes, you're not going to be able to castle anymore, but that's just the name of the game when you're playing uh, some crazy gambits that your opponent's don't know how to defend, or maybe they do, and they just like to attack like this. Now, from here, there's a couple options. The best move would be to take with their queen here on c2. There's going to be an exchange. The queen takes. Knight takes here. Knight's going to take up here. Knight's going to take down here on a2. White's going to be okay in this board state, but they could be in a much better space if black makes a mistake, and that is to take with their knight. Because they may think, okay, this is completely free. Now I can take this rook. This knight's defended by my queen right here, uh, but white has a much better move, and that is to play knight to d2. So attacking the queen, this knight's still under attack, but the queen is forced to move. Now they may come back here to uh, f5, because this still defends the square and attacks this knight here on f7. If they move somewhere else, we could just freely take this knight here on c2. But if they want to stay on this long diagonal, uh, they may come here to f5 if this is the case uh, then we can just come here to e2 uh, this is check kind of the in-between move to force your opponent to go somewhere they have a lot of options knight to e7 they could bring their bishop back here to uh, e7 all those uh, make a lot of sense uh, but from here yeah we can go ahead and take here on h8 if they take their material here on a1 then we can play bishop to d3 attacking the queen once the queen moves it, has lots of different options as far as where it can move. The bishop can come up here, take here on h7. Next move, queen to h5. Check, putting a lot of pressure on our opponents. His king side is completely decimated. Yes, we can't castle on our king side, but we have a lot of protection here. This knight on a a1, it's not really doing too much, and we can easily put a lot of pressure on it and capture this at some point, but just look at the king side of the board. So much pressure that white has on. This is going to be a very good game. Now, if we come back and say maybe they don't early on go to e7. That, that is the best move that we talked about for them, queen to e7, but they have a lot of other options. One move would be just continue like normal, knight to f6 and say, uh, yeah, you can take up here. Maybe I'd come down. I want to take your pawn on e4. Try to d dominate the center of the board. Just take here on f7. If now, since we're attacking the queen and the knight, they probably don't want to lose their queen. Queen to e7. Now you just take the rook here on h8. No real good squares for black to go. They're definitely going to lose this game. If instead of 
queen to e7, they decide queen to f6. Maybe they want to get more involved into the game, still defends this square here on f7. Remember, they're not going to capture material here on f7, so it's it's kind of a moot point to try to defend it with f6. But in this the case, I would play bishop takes on f7. The small difference is this queen is attacking the square here on f2. So if you were to play knight to f7, now they can play knight to e6. This is blocking your bishop from defending the knight, and it's also opening up the door for a discovered attack. Now the bishop and the queen are both attacking this pawn here on f2. This would be checkmate. You are going to have to defend against that, and at the end of the day, you are going to lose your knight here on f7. So in this case, if they do play uh, the queen to f6, you can still capture material here, but you need to do it with your bishop instead of your knight. Now, once you do take with your bishop, you have a couple options, what you may see from your opponent. Let's say they play uh, d6. All right, well, first it is is check. Uh, so they may play king to f8. Uh, and then you're going to first bring your knight back here to d3. So important uh, first move before I get to next variations from black. They could play uh, d6. In this case, go ahead and bring bishop back here to uh, h5 and the reason they would play d6 is to defend this square here on c5 since it is under attack by our knight another option would be they may take with their king if they do yes we can take right away with our knight but it's even better to play queen to h5 check and then our queen can come over and take this this material so maybe g6 and then queen takes on c5 this allows you to take material get another active piece involved into the game now your queen is attacking here on c7 it's also attacking the knight here on d4 uh, and it's also defending this square here on c2 from the knight so very very aggressive square for the queen compared to if it was here on d1 and the knight just came and captured right here if they take with their queen then in this case you can just go ahead and take with your knight here on c5 now that's what happens if they come to f6. Again, I want to give you as many options as possible in case you see it. They could also try to be pretty aggressive with queen to h4. So yeah, I'm going to attack this material in the center of the board. I would go ahead and castle to the king side. This looks free for them to take, but they can't really take it because queen to h4 or e4 here and then rook to e1, they're going to lose material here just doesn't matter how they look at it uh, there's a discovered attack here uh, on the king once the knight moves and so there's just no way around it there's no good moves for black in this position and then lastly uh, instead of the queen getting involved you could see uh, maybe pawn down to d5 trying to block up the bishop and the knight pairing here in this case just go ahead and take with their bishop on d5 you still have the same threat you took material in the center of the board all in all this is going to be completely fine i really like when my opponent takes here on d4 at the very beginning because it lets me know hey i can come up to e5 they're more than likely going to ma make a mistake and i can start to chip away and attack my opponent's king side of the board the next variation we're going to look at is if the bishop takes which is probably the best and correct way that black is going to continue here in this case, I recommend playing knight to g5. Uh, there are other options that you can play. I just like to play aggressive if I'm playing a gambit. And in this case, knight to g5, I think, is the strongest move that you have to stay aggressive. You're still attacking this square here on f7, and your opponent has to deal with that. Now, the best move for them to do that is knight to h6. Every other move they have it's beneficial for white and white's going to have a very strong game. And this move for a lot of players is not easy to make for two reasons. One, it's just not an intuitive move. You generally are taught to bring your knights to the center of the board. Knight to F6 is a general development move. And also, while this may be correct for black, a lot of players, once they get it here, they don't know what to do later on to the game. They end up with their knight hanging out on this H file that's not where you want it to be. So even if you see this in the back of your mind, you may think if my opponent's not strong enough, this still could be an extremely good game because it's not in the best spot. But if they do play this, I'm then playing C3, forcing their bishop to move. Maybe it comes back to uh, C5 here. You could play 
b4 forcing the bishop to come back you castle on the king side if they bring it back right away uh, that's fine as well i would still just castle on the king side all in all this is going to be completely fine for white you still have a lot of threats on the board uh, you can open up for your dark square bishop already to get involved into the game so very good options here if instead they don't play knight to h6 maybe they play queen to e7 because they thought that was good before uh, it's not going to be good in this position because knight takes on f7 and they just don't have anything to show for their queen here on e7 now we come back and say what if they play d5 well same thing as before whenever you see d5 you can just go ahead and capture it's being protected by the pawn doesn't really matter where the knight is on the board now sometimes they may just try to kick your knight away not really think about all the threats so h6 pretty easy you're just going to take here on f7 this is attacking the queen and the rook here uh fairly straightforward uh from white so while this is probably better for black i would just go ahead and play knight to g5 and there's nothing they can really do to put you in a bad position even knight to h6 here you're not under any threat that they are defending the square here on f7 properly uh, but you still get to play offense and you get to develop as you normally would like to. The last variation we're going to look at is if the pawn takes here on d4, and I'm going to be playing c3. Yes, I'm offering them another piece in material, but that's okay. That's the point of a gambit. You give up some material so that you have a really strong board presence. If you're the type of player that if you go down material, you can't win because you want to exchange material until both sides just have one or two pieces, this game, it's not for you, but pretty much any game, it's not really for you. You need to be able to use the material, and chess is all about using the material you have in the game, not just about how much material you have on the board. So this is a great position. If they do this, it's completely fine. You can castle on the king side, get your dark square bishop involved into the game, bring your rook over here to the semi-open file here on d1. That is the game plan for white. Now, if they don't take, they could play knight to f6, just get into pieces developed into the game in this case i'm playing e5 i don't necessarily want to take right away i want to force them to make another mistake see how they continue i can castle on the king side i can get my bishop involved into the game lots of different options here now if they decide to go ahead and play a queen to e7 which many times they're doing to attack this pawn here on e4 i'm going to go ahead and castle on the king side this one puts me in safety, so I don't have to worry about the queen coming down, checking my king. But also, it just sets the trap if they potentially think, for whatever reason, they can come down here and take the pawn. They cannot, my friend, because rook to e1, this is going to lose the queen. There's just no other option that they have. They can't move the queen. The king is under attack, and there's no way to put a piece in front of this. So that is the Italian gamut. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that video. If there's another opening you want me to do a video on or some other uh, chess video would like me to make feel free to let me know best way to reach me is through email the chess website at gmail.com but thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next video